in the summer last year, 2019, I was pro uh, approached by Morgan, uh, a very talented young uh, film director um, here in Gothenburg. And uh, she was presenting a story that she had been developed about a middle-aged woman named Sally. Uh, the deep fake technique uh, was uh, chosen and integrated in the project at a quite early stage to realize the vision of this project. There has not really been any kind of meeting between the professional film business and, and this uh, people who, who develop this, uh, this kind of technology. Oi, hello. But also, I think it was interesting to use it now to educate the people on how to perceive pictures. Uh, because, as you say, you can see deepfake in a very negative way. But I believe that before deepfake, we have all the tools to lie to people too. Uh, with the framing and with the editing only, you can lie to people very well. And I think that deepfake can be a tool to educate even more the people to have a critical point of, point of view in front of their pictures and not take for granted what they see, but think further. Snälla! Tist! In the use of technology in this artistic environment, it's not that technology in and of itself uh, has this affordance of doing bad things. It's what we humans do with the technology. It sends the original face through this network and what it spits out in the end of the network is a prediction of this face. So in the second column you can see uh, a completely uh, computer-made prediction of the original face. Uh, in the third column you can see the destination face, the original face. And in the fifth column, it's the same. It's the computer's prediction of this face. So it's uh, completely uh, artificial, uh, artificially made. And in the last column, then, is the merger of these two predictions. So it tries to uh, predict how the target's face will look with the facial features or expressions of the destination face.